This padlock is terrible. It looks solid enough, but don't let it fool you. It's completely rubbish. Let's say we want to lock up our very pricey and one of a kind length of chain. Seems secure, right? Well, let's just see about that. Ah. It's not just this padlock though. Most padlocks you'll find in your local hardware store aren't much better. Before we get into why, we need to understand how a lock works and how we can open it without the key. This is a pin tumbler lock. In its natural state, you can see the pins are all at different heights, which will stop the plug from turning. When the correct key is inserted, the pins are all at an equal height. The meeting point of the key pin and the driver pin is in line with the edge of the plug, the point called the shear point. When all of the pins are at an appropriate height, where the shear line is unobstructed, the plug can turn, opening the lock. If we want to open this lock without the key, however, we need to get the pins into the right position another way. In a perfect lock, this would be all but impossible. However, even the best locks in the world are not perfect, and our padlock here is a long way from being the best lock in the world. When a lock is made, holes have to be drilled into the plug to house the pins and the springs. These are designed to be central, but due to the realities of manufacturing, these holes are never in a perfectly straight line. What this means is that when you begin to rotate the plug, adding tension, the hole that is furthest out of line will bind first. That is to say, the pin in that hole will be the first one to stop the plug turning. As the plug turns and runs into this first pin, it squeezes it into the casing. This stops that pin from freely moving when you push it with a pick. This is what is meant by the term binding. While this pin will not move readily, the other pins should be freely movable. Now that we have established that this is the binding pin, we need to relieve a little bit of the tension and push this pin up. When it reaches the shear line, the plug will turn with the key pin in the plug and the driver pin in the housing. The next pin furthest from the center line is now the pin that is blocking the plug from turning. We move this pin into place, we get more movement from the plug and start searching for the next binding pin. We repeat this until all of the pins have been brought to the shear line and voila, we can turn the plug freely. Now, that didn't take me too long, but in comparison to a pro, it took me an age. Let's pit me, a clumsy, ham-fisted amateur, against the lock-picking lawyer, a picker who has honed his skills to a fine art over the years. Here he is, picking locks which are internally identical to my one. So, in the time it took me to pick one, he's on to his third. Now, in reality, if a criminal can pick locks, they are probably not going to be of the skill of the lock picking lawyer. They're going to be closer on the scale to me. Of course, single pin picking, as we've just demonstrated, is time consuming. If a criminal is going to try and pick a lock, odds are they're going to rake it. Rather than individually probing and prodding each pin, looking for the right one, raking is more of a scattershot method. To rake a lock, we select our rake of choice and we move it in and out whilst also moving it up and down. This works just the same as single pin picking, just a little sped up. However, it's not too difficult to make your lock both harder to rake and pick. You just need to design your lock a little better. This means that with a little bit of research, you can buy yourself a much better padlock. On Amazon UK, a master lock number three, a truly terrible lock, cost £7.45. For a grand total of £1.81 more, you can buy an Avis Inox series lock. This has one thing that at my level shuts down any picking attempt. Security pins. On our previous example, you will notice that the pins are all simply smooth rods. However, these can be swapped out for a variety of security pins. This is a spool security pin. It looks a little like a dumbbell. Let's see what happens when we try and push it out of the plug under tension. Well, that's a problem. 
you can see that it is now caught diagonally between the housing and the plug. You can't just push it up with more force without breaking your pick. So the only way to defeat this is to ease off the tension a little until you can push it up past the shear point. There are a couple of issues with this of course. While you're picking a lock, you can't see the pins. So all you've heard and felt is a click and a slight rotation of the core, just as you would if it was a normal pin that had reached the shear line. The second issue is that even if you understand that you've engaged a security pin, whilst easing off the tension to allow you to set the pin properly, it's very easy to accidentally unset another pin which you had previously set. None of this will stop a pro of course, but it will stop an amateur like me. Now that we know that, we know that there's really only one place for this crappy padlock. Good riddance. A big thank you to the Lockpicking Lawyer for permission to use this footage. If you have any interest in lock sports, his channel is a great gateway. Link in the description.